Hello, friends. I'm John Stewart. Welcome to Extra Credit with Ricky Quinn. Hello, Ricky. Hello, John. I'm glad you're joining me again. I haven't run you off. This is our fourth episode. And if you are joining us and you've missed the previous episodes, I encourage you to go back and, and check them out sometime on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, just search for Ricky Quinn Clinics and you should go right to the videos. Uh, just a reminder, in, in episodes one and two, Ricky introduced us to a horse, a uh, really cool little sorrel gelding named Yaya. And uh, on the last episode, on episode three, Ricky introduced us to this cool little roan gelding named Steve and talked us through uh, working Steve from the ground. And, and that's where we're going to begin this video is uh, bringing Steve back and uh, seeing what Ricky, how Ricky works him in the saddle. So, Ricky, I really like this colt. Uh, I know last time you, you, you uh, shared that you started him, you, you, uh, he's read at the Lazy U. You and Sarah brought the mare and the, and the colt to your house and, and raised him and then uh, started him last, last June. And the video that we're going to show really was taken in, in, in January out in Arizona, at one of your clinics out there at a beautiful facility. And uh, talk about this colt and talk about some of your goals for, for Steve, Ricky. Yeah, he's a really nice horse, a uh, really unique horse, uh, has a lot of eye appeal. Everybody likes him. Everybody who sees him really, really likes him. Um, he's darn sure been a little bit of a, a, a head scratcher for me at times based on how he is mentally, uh, based on his confirmation, what's easy for him, what's not easy for him. Uh, I just got some membership cards the other day for associations to show and the cow horse side of things this summer and he is dang sure uh, one of them that i'll be i'll be taking with me and so i'm pretty excited to kind of show him off and see what hopefully, hopefully i can stay out of his way and let him do his job you know well that's awesome well we're going to show some videos this is from january with you working steve uh, at that point and then obviously we're going to show some more videos of both yaya and steve uh as they progress uh, and, and Ricky, thank you for, for this time because the purpose of this is for us to watch when I see you do groundwork and when I see you put a, a ride on a, on a horse at one of your clinics, everybody is just, you know, it's kind of soaking it in and watching you. We don't really have the opportunity to say, hey, Ricky, stop what you're doing and tell me exactly what you're doing because I know I'm missing a bunch of it. So that's the whole point of extra credit. Uh, I encourage you to do just like I do. Stop the video, rewind it, watch it again and, uh, and, and learn. And then go apply it. I mean, we're not doing these videos just for you to watch watch videos, and it's not really just for entertainment. It's to help you in your own horsemanship, and uh, that's why Ricky's giving his time uh, to do this. So, so Ricky, let me go ahead and bring on the video. Uh, in episode three, we showed you doing the groundwork, and and this is just a. Ricky, here you are getting in the saddle. Right. Uh, well, re rewind that just a second. I will indeed. Really important. Right here. Now just just watch. When I get on and this horse leaves, watch what direction he leaves. He goes to the left a little bit. See that? Yeah. I don't think Joe Walter would be very happy with that. <laughs> right? So when I, and I'm aware of it. It's not something that I'm just going to sit there and fix right there. But when you get on a horse and you leave, you want him to leave straight as an arrow. That means they're just focused. And when he drifted left a little bit, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's because that's where the pens are, where his friend is, or what the deal is. It doesn't make any difference. But when he left to the left, there was a draw to the left. And um, a person doesn't want to beat themselves up or their horse over it. But you darn sure want to be aware of those little things. Yeah. So moving around right along here, just kind of going forward. And I'll do a lot of one rein work here. No different than yeah, yeah. Uh, allowing this horse to find this. And you'll see how his front end kind of wants to drift and Yep. At some point here, I, I, I try to allow him to find it. I'm really working hard to not come in with the outside rein if I can help it. And I will be later on, but I really want my horses to sort out my hand position of where it is now for the hind. And I lift on that rein to slow the front down there. See how the hind caught up? Mm -hmm. And now I'll kind of open up and bring the front through. And I really didn't want to have to do that if I don't have to. I want that horse to I'll stay and allow him to search until he finds something and then I'll release. But he wasn't really finding it. And so you could sit there for 45 minutes, and I don't necessarily want to do that either. So I lifted on that rein to shut that front end down so the hind could catch up so that then I could bring the front through. See, that time there was pretty good. Pretty quiet with my hands. My left hand is across the neck a little to help with the front to come through. 
switched hands, roll the hind here, and going to the right, this horse, see how I sped him up there with my leg? Yeah. See how I speed him up? Yeah, saying, catch that hind up, there we go. Oh, a little bit behind, there we go. Now he's ready. He's ready anytime here. And there he goes. Just change my left hand, and he comes through. See how my hand's on the saddle horn? Mm-hmm. My other hand? Yeah. So really trying to make sure that this horse understands it. I'm just coming in here with my right hand. There's my hind quarters. My hand's on the saddle horn. My right hand is doing the directing. He gets a, he's getting a little bit lost, so I'll come in with my reins to help, and then there's my friend. And it's really a game, John, of, of shifting the horse's weight on the front end. Here I'm shifting it forward onto the front. Whoop, no, I'm not. I'm coming in with two hands. Uh, shifting the horse's weight onto the front. Let's rewind it, John, back to the one well, ring stuff because I've switched to two hands here. Go back a couple. Yeah. There you go. Oh. So it's a game of his weight is going to be more on his front end. He's shifting his hind to the outside, right? That's what I'm trying to get him to do. Mm -hmm. And then I want him to shift his weight back here shortly. I'll shift it back to the hind feet here and then he'll unweight the front feet. So all you do with a horse is shift their weight around so that they can unweight and they can weight feet to be able to do a particular pattern that you need them to do. Got That's it. really all it is. And it's getting them receptive or, or feeling of you so that they're paying attention and they'll shift their weight for you. And that is, to me, that's kind of the gist of horsemanship. Get them to where they can shift their weight. And, may, and then getting it to where, in Ray Hunt's words, getting it to where it's their idea. You're right. Not crying them off the feet and pulling them over there and making them do things. Now I'm coming in with two hands and trying to get to where I can roll the hind here a little bit, just a little, and then bring the front through like that with more of my outside rein. I'm darn sure using a lot of inside, but I'll start to incorporate the outside uh, more and more. I'll come through, I'll pick up on my right rein, try to keep from bleeding through. I block him with my left rein a little bit, right? And then I'll set him up. That was a little abrupt, but he's trying, so I let him do it and then bring the front on through. And I'll start to work from here on out with the front end to where he's a lot straighter, to where he won't have near as much bend in him. Mm -hmm. right? There's a little bit of a leg yield right there. And at times, you know, right there, see my left hand? At mm. times, my, my left hand gets a little bit high when I'm doing things. I'm trying to shut that front down. I wish I kind of, like I said earlier, that was months ago, so there's nothing I can do about it now. But I'll darn sure that's a habit I have is getting those hands a little bit too high. And it kind of shows in my shoulders, you know? And it doesn't cause me to ride down through my lower body and through my legs. Everything happens then from my shoulders up, and that's no good. Get a little bit tight. So I want to keep those hands low, and I'm waiting for him to kind of really reach that left hind underneath there and find his feet so that that, that front, see I drifts to the right? Yeah. I'm wanting okay. him to find his feet right there. No different than yeah, yeah, right? Reaching that front to the inside. Right here, how little does it take for him to... Yeah, get those shoulders and that saddle horn to the left, right there. And that, that whole time, I was waiting for him to find that maneuver. That that minute, 30 seconds, whatever that was in there, mm -hmm. of going round and round and picking up on two reins. My hands were high. I'm waiting for this maneuver to come in right here. Right, so I'm wanting that saddle horn actually to go to the right. Right there. There it is. Yep. And nobody's, but see now, John, can you rewind that? Because there's Absolutely. something really important, really, really important. Okay, now watch, watch here. Watch what his, right ahead of the saddle horn, watch what is the shape of his neck does as he raises his head. So right here, I kind of, I push on him there a little bit, and then I start my turn, and he drops his withers, and I lift right there, right there. Yeah. See there's that V, and then his neck down to the saddle horn? That's a bad deal because that means his withers are dropping, and that that's no good. And so that's why I kind of picked up on my reins and pushed him forward there, right here, as I'm saying, get your withers up, drop that head there, and then yeah. I get quiet. Mm -hmm. 
and then he gets more relaxed. It's really important that those withers don't drop. There. Now he's got it. Now he can carry himself through and be a lot more balanced and stay relaxed through the base of the neck. See, that's exactly why we're doing these videos, Ricky, because I would have missed that a hundred times out of a hundred. Yeah. And so also as I'm going through here, like that one right there was really good. And a lot of people, for me, this is where I am today. Um, when I bring the front, I used to do it as a maneuver, you know, because it was cool and the whole deal. And I haven't found a practical use to anchor up an outside hind leg and spin a hole in the ground. I do it, right? Because it's more, it tells me, look at my left hand. I wish I'd drop that. Um, it, it tells me where my horse is as far as balance. Being able to roll the hind, anchor up on an outside hind leg, and auger a hole in the ground mm -hmm. is all about balance. It's all about balance. Otherwise, I want those hind feet to be moving left and right. I don't want any hind foot to just be stuck necessarily like that. And, and, and right there with his head going up, John, I was working on the, uh, getting him to where he can drop that head and, and roll those withers up through that saddle horn like right there. Um, but so with this turnaround stuff right, right here, there. Yeah. right? Yeah, he, he loses it a little, and that's why I wanted to talk about it. Right here he's got her anchored up pretty good. But he falls forward out of it a little and fumbles around. I kind of want him to fumble around with it a little bit and allow him to find balance rather than me manipulate with my hands and legs so much and constantly putting him back into balance. I, I don't mind kind of letting a horse work through that uh, and, and find that place a little bit more than maybe what I would have in the past of correcting to. Ricky, I'm going to I'm going to rewind this a little bit just because I really like when you're I'm watching the outside hind when you're, you're back in here, but hold on. This should happen right in here. Because there you're giving him. Right hind. I want that right there hind coming to his right, yeah. right there. Boom. Right there. There's a right boom. there. And then I'll bring the front through and try to combine them, and he gets a little lost. It's kind of new to him. You know, mm -hmm. he gets a little lost, right? That's it's a, He gets forward, and I say, oh, it's okay. Here, let's just roll back. Yeah. You get lost a little bit, and yeah. And I'm saying get that right hind out. There. There. Watch here towards the end is a big one. It gets there is where yeah. I release. See how far that moved over? Mm -hmm. That's why I did such a big release right there. We'll do it again here, too. There. There. There is a big one. That's why I released like that. Yeah. Really want him putting effort into there it is. There it is. That right there is what I want. There. Mm -hmm. It could be a little bit further back, but it's okay. I'm not looking for him to do things right. I'm looking for him. I heard this saying the other day, and it's so true. It's not that winning is what matters. It's the will. It's the want to win. Mm. Whether you win or not is irrelevant. It's the want to, right? And with these maneuvers, it's not the maneuver. It's the it's the, that horse to get it. And that's what that's what we want to really kind of work through and nourish. You know, is them wanting to do that, maneuver. right? Whether they do it or not is irrelevant and i can see why everybody looks at this colt and just really likes like steve i mean he's just such a cool yeah. little dude but but you're right yeah. as we rewound this i mean this he still checks out on you every now and then yeah he he's doing really good here i kind of like causes me to you know the ride always feels different you know than, than when you watch it and mm -hmm. Um, I, I love how where his mind is. I love how he's trying. He's he's young, you know. Uh, started him later in life as a three year old rather than a two year old, you know. And started him in June, and then he got hurt, and I wasn't able to do a whole lot in there with him. Yeah, because you gave some time off, didn't you, after he got hurt? Yeah, got a month and a half, two months right in there, and then had to give him, you know, work him back up into it because um, I'm trying to treat my horses a little bit more like athletes rather than you know the tool that I used to use them and uh, to do some of the things I need them to do, they 
truly kind of our athletes. So to get him back into shape, get his wind matched up to his blood and, and um, you know, the areas that hurt him, that he hurt in his pelvis, getting everything matched out and relaxed and reaching equally. And it that rehab takes some time, you know, and the yeah. physical therapy through the riding and everything. It takes a lot of time. And so – um, but he's, he's doing very well today. I mean, he, he's really riding well today. He's back in shape and strong and doing good. Well, I look forward to seeing how he progresses. Uh, so we're going to watch this one more time as you go through here, Ricky. Okay. All right. Yeah. He's starting to bridle up nice. His withers are coming to the saddle on. He gets a little lost here as far as falling forward right there. Mm -hmm. But again, it's okay because he started out great. He recovered there a little bit, and then he falls forward again. That's just a balance issue um, with the timing of his feet. Some of it's going to have to do with strength, right? He's not he's in shape, but he's not in the best of shape right here. Um, as he gets stronger and more fit, especially in that core, he'll he'll really start to hold himself a lot better. But I like how, you know, he's he's relatively soft in my hands. He's not mm -hmm. necessarily just really pulling on me really hard and kind of being ignorant that way. He's really trying to figure out what I'm asking and and, and putting a lot of effort into things. That, that's for sure. But there's times here where he'll kind of get this horse will, when he gets a little bit lost, it's really hard to get him to think his way through trouble. you got to stay quite a long time. And to, for him to find it out the other side. And thank goodness we don't have one of those moments on this video. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty good progress, Ricky. I appreciate you sharing this with us. Yeah, absolutely. So there's more hind quarters. I'll probably set up. There's the front end. That's really nice right there. Just, I'm watching not so much how perfect he is, but what I'm watching is just how he puts things together and comes to me. Hmm. I think that's the end of the ride, and I pitch the reins, and he just yep. bebops along. See how low his head is? He's licking his lips. The reins are swinging. It's something Ray Hunt really talked about. Get those reins swinging. See how straight he walks to that group of people, John? Yeah. That's how I want him to walk away from people. <laughs> you drop these reins, and he's like a he's, – he's just laser straight right there walking to those other horses. Well, and Ricky, since you brought it up, I mean, let's talk, let's go back to the very beginning of this video when you get on and he does start off to the left. What are you going to, or what did you do after this to kind of correct that to where? Nothing. Nothing. It's just an awareness, right? He's going to drift to the left as I leave here. See him drift? Mm hmm. Right. <clears throat> and his mind is over there, too. That is where his friends are, right? That's going to be yeah. a natural draw. Yeah, yeah, that's where so his I just friends kind are. Of I, I was aware. I just kind of picked it, just went on with my day. I, I'm not going to sit there and train on him and, and fix it. You know, it's not, he's a horse. I just going to be aware of it. And the more I get him with me and understanding boundaries and things. Um, yeah, there you go. And then, and then at this, this is the end of the ride. What, at what point did you say, okay, that's enough. I mean, you leave him on a good. Um, he just, he, he, he improved a little bit, you know, yeah. as far as his balance and his understanding. Um, sometimes I'm going to stop the ride. Maybe they don't improve, right? May I, maybe I stop the ride because yesterday was such a big day for him or the day before the day before. There's three mm -hmm. big days for him. And today, finally, it carried and he just rolled right into things. And so I'm going to quit the ride. I'm not going to yeah. then add something new that day. I'm going to ride him. I, I really, I really want to see is when I get on him. How well does he, does he come to me and um, compared to where we left off yesterday? Yeah, right? That's good. And so, so that right there, there was there was a lot going on there. There was a lot of work. I mean, if a human being were in that horse's body and they went through what that horse went through in that quiet ride that I just did there, mm -hmm. the majority of human beings would probably try to have me arrested. Yeah. For pushing on them, for pushing on them too hard, you know. In all honesty, humans aren't used to working emotionally like that horse did in that eight, ten minutes, whatever that was, John. Right, and so I have to understand. I have to understand that 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 is a lot of emotional work and some physical there too. 
but the emotions, and I keep trying to get that horse to where I gather his emotions, gather his emotions, gather his emotions, level his emotions, get right, and keep doing that to the point that he can really, together, we can really manage those emotions. And then when I introduce something new to him, he doesn't get anxious. He doesn't get as bothered. He doesn't race up in his body, right? He right. tries to stay relaxed through those through those maneuvers, but I have to do it in such a way to where I don't create the anxiousness in him. If I create the anxiousness in him, every time we go to do a maneuver or introduce something new to him and he gets anxious, it'll ball him up inside, and as a result, it affects the nervous system, and so the muscles get tight, and then you're braced up. So that's really what I'm if, – if you're asking me, we talked about all the different maneuvers I did in that whole ride. Mm -hmm. But what I'm actually looking for is not the maneuver itself, but how he's managing mentally. How is he managing these new things that put him into a bind and then naturally bother him just a little bit? And if you go back, rewind that one more time, John, to the beginning. If, if you said, what are you doing to fix this? And I said, nothing. I really am. If you watch here, he leaves, I just see what he does, and I pick up here on my reins, and I pick up on my outside rein, and I get that right front to reach over there, change his mind, and leave him alone. So I get on, and I, I say, all right, let's go. Get out of here. See where he went? See my right hand? I'm aware of where he's going. I bring those shoulders back, more the mind than the shoulders bring it back to where I want it to be and leave them alone. Whereas on a young horse, a colt, you might pick up on your reins like that and he's stuck on his friends and you got to ride, you know, quite a little bit to get his mind directed where you want it to go. Yeah, the reality is I'm holding the camera here and right behind me is Yaya on the fence line. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly where yep. he's going. <laughs> see, yep. and now here, see his mind? Directed. I just yep. redirect his mind off of Yaya. And then gave him space. Somewhere else. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it, John. Well, Ricky, I uh, I tell you, there's there's just a lot to a lot to watch, and for those of us that that are still trying to figure this whole thing out, thank you uh, for doing the videos. I'll I'll watch that again and again, and and uh, for those of you that are joining us, uh, we're going to continue to do more of these. Uh, get some bit more video of Ricky riding uh, Yaya and Steve and get some more commentary. Uh, but go back, watch episode one and two with Yaya and then uh, the episode three and four here with Steve. And, and thanks for supporting us. I do encourage you to uh, uh, follow Ricky Quinn Clinics uh, on Facebook and, and Instagram. And, and Ricky, you have a personal Facebook account now and, and uh, making some posts and, and, and letting us into your world there at the Lazy U and at, at Olson. Uh, farms and, and it's been really great. The, we also have another series on YouTube that you can watch. That was three questions with Ricky Quinn. Uh, we for several months, Ricky and I just got together and had some special guests with us. And, and uh, if you've got forty-five minutes to an hour and you're driving somewhere, put one of those on. Uh, you might enjoy yourself. So uh, once again, uh, thank you for for supporting us. Thank you for your support of Ricky. I encourage you to check out RickyQuinnClinics.com and uh, go to a clinic. Uh, work on your horsemanship, and I think you'll enjoy riding with Ricky if you haven't had the opportunity to do so. So thank you, Ricky. Until next time, we will uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you, John. You bet.